killer negotiation techniques in a state agency. Today, I'm joined by Jason Cannon, who is an ex-estate agent and now is a coach helping agents in their growth. Jason, give me some top tips, killer negotiation techniques for estate agents. Okay, um, first of all, uh, let's just talk a little bit about um, the, the, the whole communication model. So we're bombarded with billions of bits of information and we delete, we distort, we generalize. Our biases often get in the way. And particularly in negotiation, my observation would be, um, it's something that I've said at the end of last year that I'm gonna spend a lot of time talking about in 2024, because it's a real passion of mine. And actually negotiation is not that complex. One of the things that we don't do enough of is practicing those conversations like role play role play uh yeah listen you know who am i listening to who am i modeling myself on in terms of my negotiation techniques uh, my negotiation conversations but this this comes back to i did a little study a little survey uh, at the end of last year talking about why sellers choose their agents and you know what criteria are they going to use to choose their agent and roughly speaking but pretty much 60 percent of those that completed the survey talked about uh trust as the number one reason for picking their agent well no one does business with someone they don't trust do they? no they have to know like and trust you so trust is, is 60% of those surveyed said trust was the most important thing to them. 30% said picking the agent that negotiates the best with their money. And only 10% said the, the agent with the lowest fee. I can actually back all that up because, um, because the Property Academy have their uh, best, have their EA Masters yeah. and the, the, the buyer and seller guide and, and they interview thousands you know twenty thousand and what is particularly interesting and we're going to talk about fees in a separate video is that every single year only one in six or sixteen percent of people pick the agent with the lowest fee so your numbers match that quite closely yeah so we, we've we've mentioned about assumption <laughs> that's one of my one of my you know one of my watch words one of the words that i try and live by is don't make assumptions but as agents my observation would be that they make a, a massive assumption that the fee that they're going to quote is the most important thing to a seller. Okay, well, we're going to talk about fees separately, but let's come back on to negotiation. We were talking about how negotiation, how killer techniques, how yep. it starts, when it starts. Yeah, okay. So th th this idea that negotiation starts when you get an offer. So when an uh, applicant calls you and says, thanks for showing me X yesterday, I'd like to make an offer. That's not when the negotiation starts. The smartest, best agents, you know, the top 10% of agents know that negotiation starts with the very first conversation that needs analysis. In the previous video, do check that out. Eight killer watts estate agents should do. Check yeah. that out, it's really good. That's when your negotiation starts, because at that point, person is not they don't have an emotional attachment or a tie to a particular property and you can talk to them then in terms of you know what they really want why they want it and the, the consultation questions and actually you can establish okay this is what you want to spend who's helping you with that um, and how much more could you find if you had to you've described this perfect property to me and I, and I get that um, and maybe this one is your number one choice or will end up being your number one property. But let's let's make an assumption, yeah, dangerous, but <laughs> uh, that actually I might have something better for you. So let's talk about that and let's talk about how much more you could find or what you're so really what your maximum price might be. And this is all in the in the pre qualification chat. Absolutely. Yeah. Hence negotiation starts then. Yeah. Write it all down. So when they do make the offer. 
you, you already know, don't you? You've established, you've, you've, you've built some rapport with that person. You've, ex, you've established uh, your value as, as that agent because you've had a very consultative approach with them and you've painted a picture of, okay, if I can find you the ideal property, Chris, how much, how much will you pay for it? How much more could you find? And very often my experience tells me that they will say to you, well, I can get X from my mum. Or actually, I, my, my broker tells me I can borrow a little bit, a little bit more than that. So the 500 becomes 510 or 507 or 520 or 518. So you already, you've, answered, you, you've got that in your locker, haven't you? So that's when that negotiation starts. So it starts by asking the right questions up front. So when they do start putting the offer in, you've already got that in your locker to work out, to Absolutely. squeeze an extra 10 grand out of them. Yeah. Because again, I think a lot of agents forget they work, we work for the vendor and our job is to get the best price for the vendor. Yeah, yeah. Do you have any other top tips on negotiating? I think once you've, once you've got one of those under your belt um, is using that data uh, so that the next client then trust you a little bit more because of your, you know, you've proven it once with your, your negotiation tactics. And um, so, you know, this was a stat that was mentioned last, the 2020, uh, 20 EA mentioned it last week, uh, which was a percentage of asking price on average, um, which I think was around about 96%, something like that. So the agent, the best agents that are, that are great at negotiating will tell you that they're probably working between 98 and 103. I've got a couple of businesses that I'm coaching with where theirs is over 103% of asking price. And that's because they use this negotiation tactic with every applicant that inquires about a listing. And then of course, if they're skilled at negotiating with seller's money, it chances are they're also gonna be skilled at negotiating with their money. Um, we, we said this before, didn't we, about agents that, you know, they talk too much. Um, and, uh, you know, I had an agent a couple of weeks ago who said to me, I won that listing, I quoted X, and then the next breath I said, oh, but I'll do it for this. <laughs> and I said, well, why? You didn't need to do that. Um, because they'd already, just, they'd already chosen you based on the value that you offer as that agent. It was nothing to do with the fee. They'd already chosen you and you'd said that that was your fee and then you'd you'd come down by half a percent. Um, so negotiation is about getting out of your own way very often. Our mindset says this is the most important thing. Um, they won't pay that fee. I'm not worth that fee. But, at, but actually, if you take it back to that percentage of asking price, and if you're running at 100%, 2% more than the national average, or 4% more than the national average, then your buyer's paying the fee, aren't they, in effect, Chris? Indeed. And I think we're, what we need to do as agents is, again, it's not a case that you get 4% more than the competition. It's the fact that if you go with my competitors, you'll lose 4% because the fear of loss is greater than the advantage of gain. Yeah. My observation would be that it's not something that businesses spend any time working on. Okay. They might send you on a two-day listing course and then you're supposedly proficient as a lister but why not send you on a two-day negotiation course? Why not send you on a week's course of, of how to negotiate with your money and a client's money? Um, and you and I have heard some horrendous stories about, you know, that the Stephen Brown talks about it really eloquently. You know, you sit down with a client and you say, what did you pay for this property? How much more would you have paid? Was it your number one choice when you bought it? Who do you want negotiating on, on your next... Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you when you come to sell the, your biggest asset, do you want me negotiating? I'll just establish how I do that. Or do you want the old agent that was that you bought it from? Oh, and here's some evidence from 20 EA that proves it as well. Yes. Yeah. So that data exists, doesn't it? Regardless of what town, whether you're in Grantham or you're in Hartlepool or, you know, wherever you once did in East London, regardless of where you are, the data is there and you can work out and, and get someone to work it out for you and say what every agent's percentage of asking price is and days on the market is, days to exchange. You can use that data to aid your negotiation with sellers. But more importantly, start have a client focus. That, that's, that's, that would be my observation, would be businesses are not client focused enough. And then ask the right questions, take that down, 
use that in your negotiating techniques with both the vendor to get the fee up and the price for their property yep. and then use it data to back it up with such items as 20 EA insights. Yeah. Jason, thank you for your time today. Thank you, Chris.